So we've still got a few bits to do from the MOT advisories and today I thought we'd look at the front brakes. So let's start by getting the car up in the air and the wheels on. So the car's now up on the air. We've got it on the stand so it's nice and safe. We've got the wheel under there just in case. We've got chucks underneath the back wheels, both this side and the other side. And so we're ready to go. So today I've put a dust sheet down for no other reason other than it's just nicer for me to sit on while I'm sitting out here doing these brakes rather than sat in the driveway. But the first thing I'm gonna do before I start is just to check, make sure that the new pads I've got are the right fit in. They're the same size and they've got the right connections and stuff like that on them and the right lugs. What you'll tend to find is that there's different variants. One for cars with and without sports suspension. So my car doesn't have the sports suspension. It is the 170 Veloce, um, but it is on 2011. So I think that actually changed in maybe some of the older models. Ordinarily that points to kind of the cars with a sunroof, the glass sunroof, because of the extra weight. But from discussions I've had, apparently that's changed in later models. So just gonna check, make sure these are the right fittings. I'm sure they are, because we can see the lugs where they normally go into there. So we're all good. So let's get underway. So for changing these pads, the first thing I've done is just turn the steering wheel to give us a bit more access so the wheel's kind of facing towards us. So that, that way we can get to the bolts a bit easier. So on the Juliettas, you've got the pad wear indicator. So we just disconnect that connection, just remove that, tuck that to the side so it's out of the way. And then it's just a case of sliding the bit from the pad itself up off the bracket, and then that should just disconnect from this little clip here. Just pull it forward now it comes. There's then two caps to cover over the fixings for the caliper bracket or for the caliper. You just remove these kind of caps that you've got here, one at the top, one at the bottom. They come away just like that. And then inside there, what you'll find is a number seven Allen bolt. So we're just gonna loosen them off now. On the Julieta pads as well, what you've got is this kind of retaining clip at the front. So all we need to do is just release that. So we're just gonna get a flat screwdriver or something like that just to prise these clips out of here. And then that should release kind of the mechanism away from the caliper bracket. And then with that retaining clip released, next thing we need to do is try and remove the caliper itself from the assembly. So on our car, we've got kind of a little bit of a lip that we've just created here, or not just created, that's been created over time where the pads have worn into the disc. So we may need to just open them up a little bit. We'll just have a quick feel, see how much that wants to come away. I might be able to just uh, give a little bit of assistance just by getting a little driver in there. Seeing if it wants to come away a little bit more. Just ever so gently without damaging the disc, obviously. At this stage, it's useful just to have a bungee rope or something handy, just so that when you need to, you can just bungee the caliper up when it comes away, just up to something up here, the spring or whatever it might be that you can just wrap it around. And there we go, it comes away just nicely. And in actual fact, what it's done is brought one of the pads away with it. So now what I'm gonna do is just bungee this up, just up above to the spring with the bungee that we made it ready earlier. So there we go, we can see it's nicely hooked up there. Obviously the reason we do that is if we don't put any pressure on the brake lines that we've got here. And from here obviously we can see the pad that came out. It's not too bad actually, it's still got quite a lot of meat on there. And obviously the reason it came out is because it's got these kind of clips on the inside of it. So from here, with it like this in this position, hopefully we'll see if I can just pull it out and we can see those clips. There we go. And then obviously we've got the pad wear indicator cable that just comes out the side there. In the assembly down the bottom, we've still got the other pad. So that should just come out and just take it away like that. So with the caliper nicely up out of the way now, what we need to do is just push the piston back. So to do that, what I've got is one of these piston pushback tools. So I've got different plates for different pistons, of course, or different caliper pistons. But I've got one that's just gonna fit on the top here nicely. So what I'm gonna do is just get this in position and then we can wind it back now. Okay, so I've just got that nicely centered on the top of the piston now. This is kind of in against the, the inside of the caliper where it would normally be pushed from anyway. So now what we can do is just tighten this up and what it should do is just push this piston down, opening this opening up, ready for our new pads to go in there.
Okay, and then when you start to feel some resistance, that's when you know that you're all the way there and it's as back as as far as it's gonna go. And then what I also wanna do is just to make sure that these faces are as clean as possible. So what I'm gonna do is just get a bit of rag and some brake cleaner, just run around that. Because it is a rubber seal, we don't wanna get too much brake cleaner on there. So I'm just gonna kind of dab it on there just to get the worst off. And at the same time, what I'm also gonna do is just up on the inside here, just take a wire brush and just get any debris off of that as well. We can see just about where the brake pads have rubbed as well. So we just make sure that that's nice and clean and then we can move on. So then before we go into actually fitting the pads, it's worth noting, just give your hands a good clean, make sure they're as clean as possible, or change your gloves if you've got gloves on, because you want to stop any contamination of any of that brake dust and dirt or whatever it might be that you've got going onto the face of the new pads. So then at this point, we're ready to fit the new pads. So looking at my ones, what we can see, we've got this kind of film on the back of it, and it says in various places that you can see, pull off this plastic before assembly. So we're gonna remove that. Okay, so with that label removed, we've got a nice clear kind of sticky pad here ready to go on. Obviously make sure you've got the right one. Take your uh, pad wear indicator, feed it back through the hole where the previous one was, and just make sure that those clips line up where they need to through into the hole we can see just underneath the back here and then just squeeze it in and make sure it fits in nicely. There we go, just like that. Okay, the more eagle eyed of you may have spotted as well that we've obviously changed the disc while we've been doing this. So that's another video that you can see on the channel. If it's not out already, it'll be coming out next week, hopefully. And at this point, what we're gonna do is just get some anti-seize grease just to help the pads slide along these runners here. If you've got a brush, use a brush or something like that. Don't use your finger and then just use that or something just to slide that in there and just to line that runner there. Just be careful not to overspread it and get it on the disc because we ideally don't want to get any on the disc. We're going to be giving it another spray over with the brake cleaner anyway, but just do all four points and that will help any problems with the discs uh, with the pads sliding around rather. And then once we've got that grease just in those points as well, what we can do is get the other pad without the pad wear indicator. Again, just remove that plastic film that it comes with and just insert that into the carrier there. Pop it up against the pad, uh, pop it up against the disc rather, it is the pad. And now we're ready just to bring the caliper down carefully. So I've got my seven mil bit, Allen key bit ready to go as well. I'm just gonna take this caliper off of the bungee strap, bring it down, make sure our brake line isn't twisted or anything like that. Offer it in, line it up. Once we're happy, if you need to move the seven mil bolts out a little bit, just pull them out. If not, get your Allen key, make sure it's lined up. Get the first one in there, just to snug it up a little bit so it's ready. And then you can just have a quick check, make sure everything's good, carry on. We'll get the other one tightened up off the other side as well, and then we'll look to torque these up. Okay, so with those two Allen bolts nicely inserted in there, just snug them up. So the torque setting for this apparently is between 27 to 30 newton meters. Like I said before, my torque wrench only goes down to 30. So I've set it at 30. So we'll just torque these up to 30. There we go, that one straight away. And then the other one down the bottom here. And that's 30 already. There we go. Once they're done, don't forget to put your little caps back in just to save them getting dirty. Okay, so now we just need to get the clip back in here that we took out previously. Just giving it a little rinse over, just a little wash over. So we'll go bottom end in first, just to reverse of where we took it out, into the top. Gonna need a bit of persuasion just to get it in there. So I'll get that on there now, and then we can move on to getting our pad wear indicator plug back in. The pad wear indicator just need to pop that into that little clip there just so it's kind of in that carrier and then we just make sure that this slides over that fix in now as it comes down careful not to bend it and then we can get our sensor cable just back underneath the way it was previously just clip that back on the front there that's done and then obviously not forgetting to remove our bungee strap that we've got up here so I'll just get that out of the way and then at this stage, because we're all back together, what I'll do, I'll just give it once more over with the brake cleaner, just on the face of the pad, just on the face of the disc rather, just here. Give it a spin round, just to make sure that we get everything. 
And because you should always change your pads in pairs, I'm just now gonna get the other side done. So the passenger side is now done as well, or the left-hand side of the car. So that's all ready to go. This side's all ready to go as well. And one thing I'd highlight as well, just while we were pushing pistons back on the calipers, was that just we had some of the brake fluid, obviously as we were pushing it back in, come back into the system, come back into the reservoir, and just kind of overflowed a little bit. So if you're doing it, just make sure you've got something under the car if it's gonna drop down, or wrap a rag around there for while you're pushing those pistons back. So while we shouldn't need to bleed the brakes, because we didn't actually induce any air into it, all we've done is obviously push the pistons back, and now obviously our new pads are right against the discs. We can just about hear them touching it there. What I wanna do, what I wanna try, it's just using the diagnostics. We're just gonna connect and see if we can bleed the brakes using the system here. So I've connected up ready just as we did before previously, just the hose onto the bleed nipple, which comes down just through into this bottle to collect any brake fluid that might come out. So I've got the laptop here ready. So I'm gonna get the ignition on and then we'll connect to the right system. Okay, so apologies for the reflection, but we're gonna try and connect to the ABS system just there. I think it's the bottom one. So I'm just gonna to connect to that one into ECU, just about says that. Okay, there we go, and we're connected. We're on the right system. This is actually adjustments over here. So we've got two different hydraulic circuit, one bleed and hydraulic circuit, two bleed. And the instructions here basically say that they're opposite corners. So you've got this front corner is paired with the, uh, the rear corner, and that other front corner over there is paired with the other rear corner, so diagonal. Ones. Obviously it says the instructions is to make sure that there's enough brake fluid, release the cap off of the brake fluid reservoir underneath the bonnet. So we've done that up there. And then do not execute this without loosening the nipple. So we've loosened this off. So this is now loose, just coming down here into our makeshift brake fluid catcher. I'm not sure if hydraulic circuit one is for this wheel or if that's hydraulic circuit two, but we're gonna go with number one for now and see how we get on. Okay, so I've tapped execute. It just said, please read all notes to make sure that's fine. So we're gonna click yes. And what we're expecting is for the pump to turn on. Okay, perfect. And just as it did that, I'm not sure if you saw it or not, but the brake fluid come out and now we've just got a small little bit just in our makeshift reservoir, just down here. You can see it's in the bottom now. So we'll do it once more, just to make sure it's all good. Execute, yes. You can hear that pump going again. And that's just flush that through once more. Okay, brilliant. So obviously what we found there was that number one was for this front right corner and the rear left corner over there. So now what we can do, I'm gonna repeat that just with circuit number two, go around to the other side and just do exactly the same procedure. So having bled the brakes, what we're gonna do now is just look under here. Obviously we had to loosen it off before we did that. And we can see in there, we've got a good amount of brake fluid. And hopefully if I can just come down to the camera, we can see our max line there and we're actually bang on the max. So we've actually managed to just get rid of that excess fluid that we've created with the extra width of those new pads. So we just tighten that up, disconnect the laptop from the car, and then we can look at getting the wheels back on. So now with the wheels back on, let's get the car down so we can get the wheels torqued up. Okay, so the car's back down on the ground, all the extra stands and the jacks removed. What we're gonna do is the first time I've actually felt it, so I'm just gonna put my foot on the brake, see what it feels like. It feels really solid actually, but obviously what I wanna make sure is that it's gonna stop us. So I'm just gonna turn the ignition on, check for any fault codes, I think we're all good. Start the engine. Everything's fine. Just check the dashboard, right front door open. I can shut that. Everything's all good there. No other lights on the dash, in the dials, handbrake only. Come back down here. Sorry about the leg shot. Just check the brake. Feels lovely and solid. No issues there whatsoever. So I think up next, we'll take it for a quick test drive. Okay, we're back from the test drive and everything's great. It's actually really easy to do, so I'm really glad that I gave it a go. Hopefully it's given you the confidence to be able to give it a go as well. So if you've enjoyed it, if you found it useful, remember to give us a like down below. If you haven't done so already, remember to hit subscribe coming up here now. 
like i always say really appreciate you taking the time out to watch the video so thanks very much and i'll see you in the next one cheers